Hey guys, this is Mike Turber with 5x5 News, and with the release of Tiger King 2, so comes more questions about the disappearance of Don Lewis. The Hillsborough County Sheriff's Department held a pre-release conference in which Detective Corporal Garcia actually answered questions in regards to the missing Don Lewis. Here is that interview. For you. If you're unable to record, remember at the end of this interview, we are sending out the recording to everyone who is a part of our Zoom this morning. So we will go ahead and get started with just a synopsis of where HCSO picked up after the release of the original Tiger King. And Corporal Garcia will kind of detail that for you and then we'll begin taking some questions. Corporal Garcia. So we reviewed the case uh, back in March of 2020, right in the middle of the COVID pandemic, which uh, caused us a little bit of difficulties as far as interviews. We met with the daughters and collected the DNA from all the daughters, sent it to the University of North Texas to have it on file. Um, as a result of Tiger King, we contacted and followed up on well over 200 leads. A large amount of those were virtually useless. Some somewhat useful, but nothing concrete out of them. Uh, we conducted approximately 50 interviews between myself and two cold case investigators, uh, which is well over 20 hours of interviews, collected all flight records related to Don Lewis, all passport entries in and out of the country related to Don Lewis, um, all federal documents and reports relating to Don Lewis. Um, the Homeland Security Division through their Panama office assisted us with running down leads in Costa Rica they were provided with a facial age progression, which was conducted by Dr. Kimberly in the USF Anthropology Group. Uh, we attempted to run down the infamous uh, septic tank story that aired in the first Tiger King. Uh, we were denied access by Carol Lewis. Uh, we attempted to make two more interview attempts with Carol Lewis and denied both times as well. And additionally, we have viewed well over 400 diary, entry, diary entries that Carol Lewis has put on the internet. At this time, the investigation is still ongoing. We'll go ahead and begin our question portion of this. Uh, Corporal Garcia, if you don't mind just explaining why this case is something that the Sheriff's Office picked up, how we got to the point where we began asking for tips again. The Sheriff, Chad Cronister, had taken an interest in the case um, as a result of the Tiger King uh, phenomenon that came out and personally uh, met with myself and wanted this case reviewed and looked at thoroughly. Um, as a result, we've taken it on and gone through extensive interviews of everybody that was in the case. We re-interviewed everybody and have looked at new evidence and continue to investigate. And Corporal, can you tell us if you think the second season of Tiger King will be helpful? Um, it's a double-edged sword. Uh, the, it will be helpful. It will get a lot of interest into the case again. Um, the backside of the sword is always the fact that there's a lot of information to be out there again that sometimes we don't want out there. And it can also lead to a lot of uh, rumors and innuendos and rabbit holes that I have to go through. But it's definitely going to be helpful. Did we see those rumors and, and rabbit holes after season one? Absolutely extensive amount of them. How did that help or hurt the investigation? It definitely didn't help. The rabbit holes don't help. It, it takes time to run through them all and, and get to the bottom of it. And when you get to the end of it, you realize you've exhausted hours and sometimes days and, and it's just been a rabbit hole that went nowhere. So it, they don't help. Are there any forensic components to the investigation at this time? And if yes, can you give some details? I'm not comfortable giving away information about any forensic and evidence that may be, may be leading to this case. It's still an open investigation. I'm just not comfortable to provide any information on that. Can you please explain more about the septic tank rumors? And is it frustrating not to be able to at least take a look on the property? So in the first Tiger King, there were some rumors that came out that Don Lewis was buried in a septic tank or underneath a septic tank on the property and that there were multiple septic tanks. So we spent an ex extensive amount of time trying to track down where that information was coming from, um, looking at the property, seeing how many septic tanks were actually um, on the property by, by permit. Um, we wanted to go onto the property and kind of look around, see if there's some other on there that weren't with a permit, but we were not allowed access. 
to the second part of the question, yes, it is frustrating. I'd, I'd like to get on that property and look around a little bit. What has your interaction been with Carol Baskin? There has been no interaction with Carol Baskin. We've attempted at least three times to talk to her and three times we were denied by her attorney. Through the tips that came in, what were some of the um, crazier or more odd tips that you received after the Tiger King was released? Uh, we just got one tip just recently that uh, the we had an art of forensics display at a local museum and somebody pointed out that they believed that one of the busts that were done in the art of forensics, a reconstruction of a skull, was Don Lewis, but the person had been gone long before Don Lewis went missing. We had another one that said that uh, one of the characters on Tiger King was Don Lewis and didn't understand why we at the sheriff's office couldn't figure that out, but it clearly was not Don Lewis. Is Don Lewis's family <clears throat> still optimistic that this case could be solved? Um, I'm in regular contact with the daughters. Uh, I empathize with them. They just want some kind of closure with their father. I, they're very hopeful that I can get some resolution to this case. So we have two different outlets kind of asking a similar question. Um, are all the leads, have they all been exhausted at this point, investigated at this point? Kind of what's the status of the case today? The case is still ongoing. It's still an active case. There is still um, avenues that we are pursuing. Um, I'm not going to get into do too deeply into what it is that we're looking into, but there are some avenues that we are pursuing still. Um, this one is saying, on a scale of 1 to 10, how high is HCSO's hope that investigators will find out once and for all what happened to Don Lewis? I myself believe that this case can be solved. Um, if you ask a homicide investigator, can he solve a case? If he tells you no, you should take his badge away. We continue to push hard on this case. We continue to exhaust every means on this case. The sheriff, Chad Cronish, has been very committed to this case and has made it very clear to me on multiple occasions that whatever I need, he's going to provide it for me. So we do, we do believe we can get this done. Will you and other investigators watch the new season of Tiger King? Did you watch every episode of the first season? I actually did watch every episode of the first season, and I probably will watch every episode of the second season as well. Does Carol Baskin's silence signal anything to you? Most missing persons, their family members, wives, spouses, they cooperate with the law enforcement. They want to know what happened to their loved one, and they cooperate however possible. At this time in the investigation, what's your theory on what happened to Don? Is Carol considered a person of interest or a suspect, if not why? Uh, Carol is considered a suspect and a person of interest. The only person in this case that is not considered a suspect and person of interest would be myself. Everybody else is a possibility, uh, with Carol being a, a high possibility. Did the Sheriff's Office re-interview Kenneth Farr since March of 2020? Um, Attempts were made to re-interview Kenneth Farr, and he as well did not interview with us, and was, we were denied via an attorney. Some more questions are coming in. Um, what are your message to the internet sleuth out there? I really don't think much about the internet sleuths. I, I don't have a message for them. Um, their their heart is in the right place. They want to help out the families, but. I've got to worry about what I can present in a courtroom, and um, I don't have time to really get in the wild speculations like they do. And was there anything in the documentary, either one or two, that was eye-opening for you and your investigation? No. Um, no, the characters are who they are, and once you kind of get to know who the characters are, there's really nothing that shocks you anymore. How much of your time has been spent on this case? I, we reopened it in March of 2020, um, and it has been my case with along with two investigators the entire time since then. Um, there's, not, there's not a week that goes by that we don't have our hands into this case file. Were there, are, are there people who have been refusing to be interviewed in this investigation? Yes. Have you talked to anyone from that appears on season two? 
I have not seen all of season two yet. I can tell you that everybody that's part of season one and everybody that's part of the case file has been re-interviewed. Um, I would assume that if they're in season two, that they're a part of season one as well. And I would tell you that yes, they've been interviewed. Was there anyone else from the Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office that was interviewed or part of season two? No, I'm the only person that was interviewed reference to Tiger King season two. How, sorry, I just want to remind everyone, if you have any questions, just submit them through the chat feature. Um, how does having a documentary like this out regarding one of your cases help or hurt your case? Are there any benefits to having a documentary out related to a missing person's case? Again, as I said earlier, it's a double-edged sword. The front side of the sword is, is it helps because it gets a lot of attention to what you're trying to do. The back side of the sword is a lot of attention gets put out in the internet world that you wouldn't want released. Um, that could come back later and become a problem. So it's, it's, it's a good thing, but it's, it comes with its faults as well. Who would you like to interview the most? Carol Baskins. Two outlets asking a similar question. Um, we'll read the longest version of it from Chris. Were there many people other than Kenneth Farr and Carol Baskin who refused to be interviewed? Who are the people that you'd like to talk to most you've already answered that part? The only people that have refused to be interviewed thus far has been Carol Baskin and Kenny Farr. You describe Carol Baskin as being a high possibility. Can you elaborate on what you meant by that? That might, might have misspoke high profile uh, person of interest, um, somebody that we'd really like to talk to reference to this case. Um, that's what I meant by it. We saw in the interview or in the documentary, someone who claimed to be a psychic who was able to potentially help find Don Lewis's remains. What are your thoughts on that? Do you think that something like that is possible? No, I don't. What would it take to get a warrant to search the property? Probable cause to get onto the property. Uh, develop probable cause to search that property. It's an extensive piece of property, over 40 acres of property. Um, it's a, it would be a cumbersome task. You've got to remove all those cats onto there and then get on there and, and search all that property. It would, it would be cumbersome. You need a strong amount of probable cause to do it. Was Don Lewis spotted in Costa Rica? Can you expand on the alleged sighting? Uh, that would go towards the active investigation. I'm not gonna speak on that. Have Sheriff's Office investigators visited other properties that Don Lewis owned? The Sheriff's Office has visited every property that we're aware of within Hillsborough County and all the surrounding counties that Don Lewis owned or did own. Have there been other investigations that have spawned from the disappearance of Don Lewis? Not within Hillsborough County, no. A reminder to those who are on our chat, if you have any additional questions, please type it in the box and we will um, share it with Corporal Garcia. <laughs> Uh, in the meantime, Corporal Garcia, do you mind sharing with us your initial reaction to seeing Tiger King 2? Do you feel like it was um, a fair representation of some of the findings that you found um, in your in your research and in your investigation? I have not seen the Tiger King 2 in its entirety. Um, what I have seen is um, largely consistent with what I found. Some of it is not. Um, and I'm not going to get into what the parts were consistent, what parts were not, but some of it is very consistent and some of it is not. Corporal, what's next? What's the primary focus going forward? To resolution, try and find where Don Lewis is, what happened to Don Lewis. Um, that is the goal in this investigation. That you, let the case where take, you let the case take you where the case takes you. Whatever lead comes up, you go through it. And uh, the final resolution is what we're looking for.
Okay, we will just pause for a moment to see if anyone has any additional questions. Oh, another one just came in. Uh, Corporal, can you explain your background? I've been with the Sheriff's Office 21 years, um, 10 years as a homicide detective. I'm a corporal and now I'm back at, in the homicide section as a corporal in the homicide section. Prior to that, I was in the military for 10 years. Tiger King 2 revealed a supposed Homeland Security document stating that someone claimed to have seen Lewis alive after he was reported missing. Do you believe that document is inaccurate? Again, that goes towards the active investigation. I'm not comfortable discussing anything about the active investigation. Okay. We'll leave the chat box open for, for, for about another minute here if anyone has any other questions. If not, they're kind of slowing down, so we'll, we'll wrap it up. Um, one more has come in. What would you need to have probable cause to investigate the property? Uh, there's any number of things that can give me probable cause to go into the property. Uh, it, it, to speculate on what I would need, the spectrum is quite large from evidence of something happening on the property to first eye account, first eye witnesses telling me something happened on the property. There's, it's a wide spectrum of something that could get me on the property. Can you please put in your own words how frustrating it's been for you and your team to be unable to interview Carol Bassett? She does a lot of interviews and she does a lot of online interviews with different personalities where she says that the sheriff's office has not even approached her. That can be very frustrating when you know you've approached multiple times and you've been told no. Have you talked to others in the cat world throughout this uh, investigation? If so, what have you learned from them? I've talked to a lot of people in the cat world. Um, I've learned a lot of different parts um, about the cats and how the cats are raised and their diets and their environments and what cats are known to do and not known to do. And, the raising purposes and how you raise them and what you can do with them when they're cubs and what you can't do with them when they're cubs. I, I learned quite a bit from them. There's quite a few cat people in this area that I didn't even realize they had sanctuaries all over the place and I've met quite a few of them. Is it your personal belief, knowing what you know, that Don Lewis never left Tampa? I'm not comfortable speculating on that. That would kind of go towards the investigation again if I said what my view was on that. So I'm not comfortable expect, uh, expounding on that at all. Have you talked to Joe Exotic? I have not talked to Joe Exotic. Again, we are leaving the chat box open for just a couple more minutes for any additional questions. On a personal note, Corporal Garcia, did you enjoy watching the documentary, part one and part two? Um, part one was entertaining. I, I didn't know that this world existed. Um, part two was a little less comfortable seeing your face on the screen, but, you know, it's part of the investigation, so. How does this case compare to others that you've been involved in, especially with this one being so high profile and so many rumors, et cetera? Uh, this is the most high profile case I've ever been involved in. I've, I've never been involved with a case anywhere near this high profile with so much information released, so much people, so many people interested in it, so many leads and tips and phone calls. It's leaps and bounds farther than anything I've ever been involved in. <clears throat> Do you feel the sheriff's office has at this point a clear understanding of what happened the night of the suspected Albertson's run? when Carol said she ran into her brother? We have what she said online and we have what she said initially and we've had what she keeps saying on her diary. Um, there's been extensive interviews done relating to that story. Um, I would love to interview her again and talk to her about that story to see if we can clean up some of the uh, questions that I have about it. All right, if there are no additional questions, we will give it about 30 more seconds and then we are going to end things. How confident are you that this case will ever be solved? If you ask a homicide investigator, investigator if he can solve a case, if he tells you no, he should take his badge away. I believe this, every case that we get our hands on can be solved. 
Corporal, thank you. It's probably the perfect place to wrap this up. Everyone, just a reminder, we will provide this recording to you in case your outlets weren't able to record it. We'll send it to everybody who's on the registered list. Record.